Recording in progress. Hare Krishna Prabhus, Matijis, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Welcome everyone to our ongoing study of Srimad Bhagavatam. We're studying Kapila Shiksha, third canto, today, chapter number 28. Oma Jnana Tamarandasya Vyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pistaya Bhutale Shemati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sanyavadi Paschacha Desha Tarine Vancha Kalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaihevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Can everyone see the PowerPoint? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. We'll begin with the connection with the previous chapter. Having recommended in the previous chapter that a vo devotee must bring the mind under full control, now Lord Kapila will elaborate on the yoga system known as Astanga Yoga, which is part of Vaishnava practice because its ultimate goal is to concentrate the mind on the Lord. Right, so we're going to hear about Astanga Yoga today, this chapter, mainly talking about Astanga Yoga. Here's the overview of the chapter. We will hear first of all about the, the different limbs of Astanga Yoga and the yoga practices which will bring about devotional service. So that's the first 12. Okay, and that's the first section. And then after that, we'll hear the description of the Lord's form. That will be overall. And then we'll hear about the different limbs of the Lord. So, not the just the difference. In the beginning we'll hear the overall form of the Lord and then 19 to 33 meditation on the different limbs because that's what Astanga Yoga is, meditation. So 33 to 44 the results of meditation on the Lord. Okay. So first section, Astanga Yoga. Lord Kapila, the Personality of Godhead, who is the highest authority on yoga, here explains the yoga system known as Astanga Yoga. Even Patanjali, 
explains that the target of all yoga is Vishnu. Astanga yoga is therefore part of Vaishnava practice because its ultimate goal is realization of Vishnu. Of course, Patanjali, he wrote the book called Yoga Sutras, which is uh, well known. And so his book, Yoga Sutras, it's, there's a lot of impersonalism there, but there's also some leaning towards personalism. Often the Yoga Sutras is read by impersonalists, unfortunately. But Prabhupada explains that Patanjali says the target of all yoga is Vishnu. And therefore Astanga Yoga is part of Vaishnava practice. Okay. The achievement of success in yoga is not acquisition of mystic power, which is condemned in the previous chapter, but rather freedom from all material designations and situation in one's constitutional position. That is the ultimate achievement in yoga practice. So, we should understand we're not practicing yoga to get mystic powers. We don't want to get yoga siddhis. But what we do want to do is to come to the higher consciousness to understand our spiritual position our constitutional position, right, that we're all servants of Krishna. We want to get free from all material designations. We have heard that before. Sarvo padi vinir muktam, right? Sarvo padi vinir muktam. Upadis are designations. Vinir. So give up all designations. Tat parat vina nirmalam rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhaktir jati. So it's a part of devotional service to give up material designations. So we have a little exercise for you just to begin with. Get you thinking, get you reading. For every item in the yoga system, there is a parallel activity in bhakti yoga. But the practice of bhakti yoga is easier for this age. That's text 11, purport. Identify the yoga practices being prescribed in this section. One, we want you to look through the first 12 verses and identify the yoga practices in this section and then Discuss with your partner how each of them has a parallel in bhakti yoga. Oh, okay, wait. So, can we do this? Do you have a partner? How many people do we have here this evening? Fourteen, Maharaj. Fourteen. All right, so seven pairs. How many ladies? I don't have a counterfeit marriage. Anyway, I don't think you mind if you have a lady for a partner or a man for a partner, not a problem. It's online. <laughs> Some people are together using using the same set, is it? Yes, Maharaj. So I have divided Maharaj, so how many minutes? Well, uh, I think about what? 12 verses, shouldn't take very long, we'll give you 10 minutes. Okay, Maharaj, can I open the rooms? Please. Recording stopped. I request everybody to join the rooms.
Chitta Hari Prabhu and Punishri Mataji, please join the rooms. Chitta Hari Prabhu. Sharada Gaurimi Mataji, join right now. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Well, I think they're in the rooms. You won't, they won't hear you, will they? No, uh, she just joined. Okay. Gopi Janu Prabhu, are you in a question to join the rooms? Oh, I'm sorry, Mataji. Uh, which room? Actually, there is an exercise, par exercise going on. Yes, Mataji, I, I, I'm sorry I joined you. Okay, you can, can you put me in any room? Once again, I'm assigning you to the room. I'll just check how they are doing in the rooms and I'll come back. Okay. Okay, Mataji, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji.
Brother, just for a kind of information, there is only one class left till this unit for you next class. And after that, the unit 14 will start on April 4th, Maharaj. Because they, they are taking some time for the CBA. It's already there in the schedule, Maharaj, which okay. I sent you. Okay. So Thank you have the next, this unit will end in the next class. And then unit 14 will start on April 4th. Oh, I see. So it's a break of a few weeks, huh? Ten days, Maharaj, because they are all working. They need time to prepare for the CBA. Yeah. Normally, they take one week because this is very close to them. I have given extra time. Okay. Because this this batch is like that. They want time for preparation. Okay, good. That means they're very serious. <laughs> yeah. They want time. They prepare. It's good take it seriously, they want to do well. Uh, I, many of them are reading now. Just went into the rooms. <laughs> a few, few are discussing. They didn't read before, eh? <clears throat> Online that is a problem, Maharaj. Yeah. <laughs> Staying in Mayapur only? Yes, I, I think so. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I have no plans to go anywhere. Next year, you will be able to take a couple of Shiksha Maharaj because I am starting a batch in the month of May, Bhakti Vaibhav Module 1. So, can I make the schedule if you allow me and let you know the dates? What for? The same couple of Shiksha unit 13 and 14. Kapila Shiksha? Yes. Uh huh. When will it be? It will come next year, Maharaj, because I'll start in May. If you if you are interested in teaching other units, then oh. we can accommodate accordingly. Oh, I Maharaj. see. We'll start in May, yeah? So it'll be next year. <laughs> I'm just booking you in advance, Maharaj, because you're very busy. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit. I took the day off. I didn't go on the Parikrama. Oh. For the Goramandal of Parikrama, you know, they were going, we were going. Yeah, on. I'm seeing the videos, Maharaj. Oh, really? Where are they? Yeah. It's published on YouTube, Maharaj. Mataji shared the link, Shama Gopika. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll tell her to share the link with you. Yeah, please. Yeah. It's uh, every uh, Parikrama you go, it's shared in. I put lot uh, on that website is there, so they are sharing it actually in Facebook. Oh, good. Yeah, if you have the website, or it's on Facebook, is it? Yeah, it's on Facebook, Maharaj, but there is a link actually. When they post it, they'll share the link. Okay. Mataji shares the link. Yeah, if you have the details, or you could, could you send it to me? Yeah, I will send it to you, Mataji. The full year one I have, I can send it to you right away. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a beautiful place, Pulia. Yeah. I'd never been there before. Can I tell them five more minutes or you are going to stick to the time? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to rush too much, you know. I okay, just, okay, I, I think I'll just announce them five minutes.
You want me to share the videos with you, Maharaj, or just the link? Just the links. Maria, I just shared the Facebook one. If you just click on the link, it will show you that. And you can also see the other days you went. Okay, thank you very there much. There is mypo.com and Facebook, actually. If oh. you just go into one link, you can see the other things also. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maharaj. In a minute, I'm calling them back, back Maharaj. So yeah. in a few minutes, we yeah. will close down the rooms. Okay. Once they are back, I will start the recording. All right. That is a hint that they are all back. Uh, Hare Krishna, Mataji, pranams. Mataji, by mistake, I pressed the leave. How do I go back, Mataji? That is only 10 seconds. I'm closing the rooms. So everybody will join back. So please wait, Mataji. Recording in progress. Hare Krishna. Maharaj Dhanvat Pranam. Yeah. Please accept my humble office. All right. Please accept mine. So, did you discuss everything? I am going to talk Maharaj. Almost everything. But some extent we discussed. All right, let's hear. First of all, let's hear which yoga practices did you find being, a, did you see prescribed in the first section? What were the yoga practices? Mataji, do we want to go uh, group wise? How? Yeah, go ahead. You can speak. Okay, Maharaj, so uh, in, in uh, Shloka 1, you know, we already saw the slide where, you know, Ashtanga Yoga is, is considered part of uh, Vaishnava practice because uh, there also the, the ultimate goal is attaining Vishnu. There are various steps like observing silence, uh, practicing different yoga asanas, uh, pranayam, you know, controlling the breath, 
uh, withdrawing the senses, concentrating mind on the heart. So all these can can also be achieved in in bhakti yoga. Uh, it, it says observing silence, but bhakta doesn't talk. Uh, you know prajalpa. He he would he would like to talk uh, Krishna katha, and uh, the the steadiness in bhakti. Uh, the, the controlling breath of air and all that essentially that is to uh, control the mind so that the mind can concentrate uh, you know on the on the lord in the heart uh, whereas bhakta he achieves that automatically uh, we see the example of uh, amrish maharaj you know savai mana padar vindayo so so these are some of the examples uh, maharaj other other devotees can share i have a question i can ask at the end maharaj after after others share okay maharaj ji has raised hand maharaj yes Hare. yes Hare krishna maharaj please accept my humble obeisances uh, some of the um, uh, like how rasesh prabhu said uh, some of the qualities uh, like ahimsa satyam uh, these uh, which come under yama and niyama of the ashtanga uh, yoga practices like the devotees also follow ahimsa because they understand mamaya vamsho jeeva loke de and everything in relation to krishna they take that everybody is a part and parcel of krishna so they um, naturally become non violent and uh, satyam truthfulness also they they understand that the lord is sitting upadrishtanu manta cha they understand the lord is sitting as a witness and they uh, so they never speak a, a lie um, uh, so like this uh, these practices of yama and niyama also uh, bhakti yogi practices okay what about asana this bhakti yoga practice asana Yes, um, when we are chanting, um, we generally sit uh, straight in one position. Uh, we concentrate on our hearing, and um, that that also is a particular asana, padma asana, which they call. And sometimes during the kirtan, uh, many of us uh, do the swami step, which Shri Prabhupada said, the raised hands. So that is also one of the asana which the Mm, uh, yogis follow yes anybody could add anything to that an asanas what else do we do in yoga no asana is required maharaj we can uh, just by oh, asana is not a must we can do just by hearing and uh, chanting it is more than enough the concentrate on hearing and chanting you don't no, offer no. obeisances you never offer any obeisances definitely we offer maharaj well isn't that asana getting up bowing no. down that's yeah that, that is the asana maharaj yes dandavat pranam is asana yes you offer your obeisances that's also asana right you dance yes, in the kirtan also okay what about pranayama we don't do any pranayama maharaj breathing like chanting hare krishna hare krishna so the breathing in and breathing out that itself is asana yes right chanting that's a parallel that's a process that's a parallel on bhakti yoga chanting that is our pranayama okay what about the dar, um, prachahara prachahara Yes, we also withdraw our senses. Huh? We we also withdraw our senses and uh, engage the senses in positive uh, Krishna conscious activities. Yes, right. Our prachahara is to use the senses in the service of Krishna. Prachahara, dharna, dhyana, meditation. Do we do meditation, dhyana? Yes, Maharaj, we do meditation on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. How? By chanting. Only? 
Parajun, we take darshan of the deities. Thank we start you. from the lotus feet. Yes, thank you, Prabhu. Yes, the deity worship. That is our meditation. In, we also engage in the devotional services like uh, arranging the paraphernalia, doing the arti. Uh, in fact, like uh, in fight cooking uh, prasadam and bow to the Lord also. We always try to meditate on the Supreme Person, hear chanting always. Right. Uh, that was, okay, good. Example is Ambarish Maharaj. He used to engage uh, all the limbs of the body in the service of the Lord. Now what about Samadhi? Do we get we some... don't believe in Samadhi Maharaj. We don't believe in Samadhi? We don't believe in having a fixed mind? Fixing our mind. We are also fixing our mind on the lotus feet of the Lord and the pastimes, transcendental Vaikuntha pastimes for me. Yes, fix your mind on Krishna, right. Well, the highest concentration when close book exam is going to come. <laughs> okay. All right. So, you had a question. What's your question, Prabhu? Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, Prabhu, Maharaj, uh, Krishna Maharaj, Krishna Maharaj, Krishna Maharaj, Krishna only prasadam offered to the Lord can also come under Pratyahara? Yes, well, Pratyahara, offering prasadam to the Lord. Uh, yes, you could think like that. It depends on the mood when you're offering prasadam. Are you offering it for for the Lord and then distribute to others or is it just for yourself to eat? <laughs> Sometimes we offer the prasadam, we just eat it ourselves, we don't distribute to anybody. That is in the beginning of Krishna consciousness, Maharaj. Beginning we are eating, later on when we realize we distribute to others. Okay, so it depends on your level of realization. Okay, we'll go ahead, right? Here you can see the different stages. We need someone to read this for me. Someone read Yama. Chitahari Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Yama, non-violence, truthfulness, non-stealing, non-accepting more than necessary, celibacy and silence. Okay, and Niyama. Follow one's duties of Varnashrama. Varnashrama. Avoid forbidden duties, constant thought of liberation, eat pure food in moderate quantities, live in a secluded and peaceful place, austerity, cleanliness, study of Vedas and worship of the Supreme Lord. Yes. Gopijan Prabhuji. Go ahead, Pranayam, someone. Gopijan Prabhu. Kirtanesh Prabhuji. Nitanesh Prabhuji. Go ahead, Prabhu. Niyama, follow one's duties of Varnashrama. No, 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 no. Pranayama. Pranayama. So control the breath, purify the passage for prana by practice of Kumbhaka, Puraka, and Rekaka so that the mind becomes steady and pure. Benefit, doshas of body are destroyed. Okay. So pranayama, you can live longer, you can extend your life by doing pranayama. It's quite good for health. Prabhupada calls it the nose pressing yoga. Nose pressing yoga, right? You press the nose, left nostril, right nostril. Like, so these are the different processes. Kumbhaka, Puraka and Rechaka and become peaceful and get rid of a lot of diseases. Go ahead, Prajahara. Withdraw the senses from material objects and turn them towards the heart using the mind. Benefits association with sense objects is destroyed. Okay. Punish Sri Mataji. Radha Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 
पाँच सेकेंड तो धारणा fix the prana at the one spot among the various chakras by the mind meditate on the supreme lord by looking at the tip of the nose benefit sins are destroyed okay you think we could do that meditate look at the tip of the nose meditate on the supreme lord not very easy go ahead diana अनकंट्रोलेबल क्वालिटीज आर डिस्ट्रॉइड uncontrollable qualities <laughs> so it's nice to know about the different limbs of the lord we'll hear about that, that later tonight as we go on there's a detailed description the different qualities the features of the limbs of the lord and then samadhi ramana ji prabhu samadhi then it attends samadhi of the mind when the mind becomes detached from all material objects the mind suddenly gets destroyed and it destroys the misconceptions of his body he sees his atma without coverings that is he is situated in its own position your happiness is lost okay so mind has to become detached from all material things here you can see diagrammatic representation of the different angas on the bottom we have the yoga rurukshu where we have to cultivate detachment working and on the top of the yoga you have yoga ruda where you can stop work on the lower stage we're encouraged to work but on the top level of yoga then you can stop work and you can simply absorb the mind so absorb the mind you can see it's mentioned samadhi meditation absorption remembering hearing and come to the higher level of yoga by sadhana bhakti so nothing really new there so text 13 to 18 we have a description of the lord's form maharaj aha uh -huh. maharaj our uh, rasesh prabhu had a question he has raised his hand maharaj so oh, really do yeah, what's your question prabhu uh, dandavat pranams maharaj i have a question from uh, the purport on text number 4 I will just read two three lines, Maharaj, and and then uh, uh, request you to elaborate a little bit on that. The word asteyam is also very important for a yogi. Asteyam means to refrain from theft. In the broader sense, everyone who accumulates more than he needs is a thief. According to spiritual communism, one cannot possess more than he needs for his personal maintenance. That is the law of nature. anyone who accumulates more money or more possessions than he needs is called a thief and one who simply accumulates wealth without spending for sacrifice or for worship of the personality of godhead is a is a great thief maharaj request you to elaborate here a little bit on the understanding as to you know what's what's the practical application of this as to uh, keep only whatever you need for personal maintenance and and uh, so so how to quantify this well of course it's going to be different for different people different people live at different standards but the general principle is that we shouldn't be greedy and we shouldn't accumulate more than what we actually need 
uh, we've had this before in Ishopanishad. The Ishopanishad speaks about the Ishabhashya accepting your quota. Don't take more knowing well to whom it belongs, right? Right, Maharaj. So that was there in the Ishopanishad. So the same point is being made here. If we accumulate wealth without spending for sacrifice, then it's described as being a great, you're a great thief. But certainly uh, we encourage people, you know, sacrifice your hard-earned wealth for the service of the Lord. It's for your eternal benefit. And you'll see also nectar of instruction. Nectar of instruction, you'll remember, spoke about giving <laughs> gifts in charity, offering charitable gifts. There it mentions about sacrificing 50% of our end of our, we should sacrifice 50% for the service of the Lord. That's, a, of course, that's a big amount. That's a, a great sacrifice. And pr but pr pr there are examples in our line. We have Rupa Goswami, when he retired, how he divided his wealth. He gave 50% for the devotees and the, the Vaishnavas, the Brahmins. He gave 25% for his family, and he kept 25% for himself, for emergency. You have Kolaveka Sridhar. Kolaveka Sridhar was always, every day he was spending 50% to worship Mother Ganga. So, when you do like that, then you won't accumulate more wealth than necessary. And Prabhupada also guided us like that with the temples. The devotees who were managing the temples, Srila Prabhupada used to say to them, you should spend 50% of the income of the temple on book distribution, to purchase books from the BBT. 50% of your income should go for books. And the principle is that rather than keeping money in the bank, it's better to keep books. You may keep your money in the bank. The bank may go broke, or your money may be devalued. But the books, that's always valuable. So <laughs> Prabhupada encouraged us like that, not to accumulate more than what we need. Try to minimize our demands. We should understand understand everything belongs to Krishna. In karma yoga, when we give charity, we think, I'm giving. But in bhakti yoga, when we give charity, we understand it's not mine, it's all Krishna's, I'm giving back to him. So the, the real, the highest principle is to give everything for the service of Krishna. Is that all right, Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Turn what's. Okay, Thank we're, you, we're gonna Maharaj. go ahead here. Maharaj. Maharaj, one more hand is on Maharaj. Ramanaja Prabhu. Yes. So, Maharaj, I just wanted to ask about the, uh, the previous picture which Maharaj has showed. I can't, can't, he, can't hear you clearly, Prabhu. It's not clear. I don't know what you're saying. Uh, am I audible now, Maharaj? Your Prabhu? voice is breaking, Prabhu, so it's not clear. Yeah, Prabhu, you may want to turn off the video, then it may be better. Okay. Am I audible now, Maharaj? Go ahead, we'll Prabhu. try. Maharaj has shown us a picture of uh, Ashtanga Yoga process. In there, um, the process of Yamatya Dharana was. Um, with sadhana family and uh, dhyana and samadhi were kept separate. Is there any particular reason for that 
Did you get it off, Padma Sundari? He is asking the Ashtanga Yoga picture. Dhyana, in the, in the top, Dhyana and Samadhi is kept separate. Is there any special reason for that? Dhyana? They all, till, till Dharana, it is kept in the Yoga Rurukshu. And the Yoga Ruda stay, Dhyana and Samadhi is kept. Is there any special reason for that? Well, I, I haven't come across it in my readings. I don't know where he got it. The it, is, it is, this, the picture is showing it. Yeah, I see it. I see it there, yeah. Samadhi, meditation, absorption, remembering, hearing. Mm. It's there in the purport of the description of uh, the sixth chapter, which talks about 6.3 Yoga Ruda, Yoga Ruksha. You can read from there, Prabhu, Ramanuja Prabhu. Oh, there it talks about the relationship with Samadhi and Dhyana? There is an explanation of the Yoga Ruksha and Yoga Ruda. Yes, Sorry. but they don't connect it to Dhyana and Samadhi. Yeah, this. This is uh, given by Chaga Chaitanya Das uh, Prabhu. I yes, think. I know him. I know Chaga Chaitanya Prabhu. He's in Malaysia. Yeah. He's a nice man. I'll ask him sometime about this. I don't know. But I don't know myself any real connection there between the. Certainly, the Yoga Rudra is the Samadhi stage, cessation of work. We know that. But at the bottom, Yoga Rudra was cultivating detachment, and the cultivating of detachment means work. Working, but with a detached manner, without attachment to the results. So that was at the bottom, that's, cult that's the Yoga Rurukshu stage, that there has to be work. And the work will gradually bring about purification and detachment. And sadhana bhakti, right? And sadhana bhakti will go on and lead to the higher stages of samadhi. You come, you'll be able to observe. If you come to the higher stages beyond sadhana bhakti, you'll come more to bhava bhakti and prema bhakti, and you may come to the stage of meditation and fixed mind, seven and eight. Sometimes Prabhupada would compare the, the seventh stage of Astanga Yoga to our third stage in Bhakti Yoga. He said our third stage is remembering. He said that is the seventh stage in Astanga Yoga, remembering. So I, I heard that from Prabhupada in a lecture tape. He did say, that our remembering is like the seventh stage of the Astanga Yogi. Thank you so much, Mara. Okay, so here we go. 13 to 18, description of the Lord's form. Uh, we want to identify different aspects of the Lord's form and the different metaphors which are used to describe that in the form. Let's, if we look through verses 13 to 18, uh, maybe we can take a, a verse each. We have how many groups? We have about five, six groups. How many groups do we have, Manaji? Uh, the same past marriage? Yeah. We have seven. Okay, so 13, that will be group one, takes 13. Group two will be 14. Group three will be 15. Group four will be 16. Group five will be 17. And group six will be 18. Maharaj, I will divide them into six groups. Okay. That would be easier. Yes. We just want to hear your description of the Lord's form. 
We want to hear your favorite aspect of the Lord's form. <laughs> Right? Do you have a favorite aspect? We don't have long, you just have one verse each, so we'll just give you five minutes. So, according to your rooms, your verse numbers are there. Room 1, verse 13, 2, 14, 3, 15, 4, 16, 5, 17, oh. and 6, 18. How much time are at? Five minutes. Okay, please join the rooms. Recording stopped. Krishna. Hare Krishna. We are in book 5, no? So yeah. that means 17. Yeah, we will read sir, sloka number 17, Mataji. Yes, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah, let's read 17. Yes, the Lord. The Lord is eternally very beautiful and He is worshipable by all inhabitants of every planet. He is ever youthful and always eager to bestow His blessings upon His devotees. Mm -hmm. I don't see any metaphors there. The purport is there, Mataji, Maharaj. In the purport? Yeah, there is a purport. Okay. Long? In long purport. So, the, we'll read the first para, Maharaj. Okay. The word Sarvaloka Namaskara, namaskara Kartam means he is worshipable by everyone, every planet. The, there are innumerable planets in the material world, innumerable planets in the spiritual world as well. On each planet, there are innumerable inhabitants who worship the Lord. For the Lord worshipable by all but in but the impersonalists. The Supreme Lord is very beautiful. The word Saswat is significant. It is not the it is not that he appears beautiful to devotees, but is un, ultimately impersonal. Saswat means ever existing. The beauty is not temporary, it is ever existing. He always youth. In the Brahma Samhita, it is also said, Advaita Achyuta Anadi Ananta Rupam Advai Purana Purusham Navayavu Namcha He is one without a second. Uh, one without a second. Yes, although he is the original person, he never appears old. He always appears as a, an ever fresh, blooming youth. So, Maharaj, you can explanation has been given about the shloka. The Lordship is always young, ever existing. All right, so, when in conclusion? Is one without a second can be metaphor for marriage? Can it be? It's not a metaphor. There, there is nothing. Doesn't matter. But the description is there. Some qualities. Yes. Anything? Yes, about, what's your favorite? Oh, my favorite. Uh, he he gives anugraha, brutya anugraha kata. Very eager to give anugraha to the devotee. That's your favorite, huh? Yes. Okay. Good. When uh, 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 everything is compared to lotus, uh, like lotus face, we say lotus hand, lotus feet, lotus navel, lotus eyes, that yes. it's not a metaphor, but uh, compared to the beauty of the lotus. 
Uh huh. So. Yeah, suspicious. The lotus is considered very most beautiful, right? So we can we can say the point. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And then uh, the favorite is lotus feet. Like they said the whole universe is present in this lotus feet. <laughs> Okay, I think we can close down everything. Go back. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Guru. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Padma Sundari. Padma Sundari. Everybody is back. Okay, good. All right. So let's hear group 13. The Recording first, the first verse, group one. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble messages. Maharaj, in the 13th verse, Prabhupada uh, says here very clearly that we should uh, focus on the personal form of the Lord. Stopping oh. at the form. And then here it is said about the Lord's attribute of color. Uh, so, and Prabhupada here heavy, very heavily uh, states that uh, uh, it is not a poetic concoction, the Lord's color is. It is, we have to take it as it is, as given in the scriptures, authorized scriptures like Brahma Samhita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Bhagavad Gita. And also, the Lord uh, Prabhupada says over here uh, another uh, attribute of Padma. Uh, ga, uh, Padma Garbha Aruna means the, the inside of the lotus, uh, that color is the colors of the, uh, the, the, the Lord's eyes, lotus eyes. So that's what uh, resembles Prabhupada says over here. Okay, thank you Prabhu. Very thank interesting. You. Rudy eyes, like the interior of a lotus. Huh? Okay, we'll go ahead. Group 14, uh, text 14, group 2. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, in uh, 14, uh, Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport the one of the six opulences that is wealth of the Lord uh, and exact color of the Lord's garment which is saffron yellow and here the metaphor is used. It is like a pollen of the lotus flower. And Kasturba Jam, it is hanging on his Lord's chest, is described, and uh, Lord's neck is beautifully decorated with the jewels and pearls. Yes, and also the the mark of Srivats on his chest, on his breast, right? Yeah. Be the Lord from the lotus feet until the uh, crown, Maharaj. The Lord here is uh, wearing a very wonderful garland made of uh, silver flowers and there is a swarm of bees of that garland is so much that the bees are intoxicated and they are humming around the garland Maharaj and uh, the Lord is dressed with a very wonderful pearl necklace Maharaj. Uh, here are a few philosophical points that is mentioned here is yes. the, flower, the flower garland of the Supreme everything is fresh in the spiritual in, in spirituality Everything is eternal and inexhaustible and very important that actually I like very much is in the spiritual sky one minus one is equal to one and one plus one is equal to one. So there is nothing um, uh, getting diminished in the spiritual sky Maharaj. <laughs> okay, spiritual mathematics. One plus one is one. And could you explain it in spiritual terms in relation to Krishna? Krishna plus everything? It's Krishna plus everything is Krishna only, Maharaj, because everything uh, emanates from Krishna. 
And there's nothing bereft of Krishna. And Krishna. And Krishna minus everything is. Krishna Maharaj. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Next text. Maharaj, the last part uh, we haven't touched, Maharaj. Be prepared to share with the rest of the class your favorite aspect of the Lord's form. Oh, yes. Okay. What's your favorite form? The form has a Gopa Maharaj. A Gopa? Yeah. Krishna is a Gopa? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. You like the cowherd boys? Good. All right. Take 16. Hey, Krishna Maharaj. Okay. And what's your favorite aspect of the Lord? Um, uh, the, the Lord who is uh, always always there, uh, playing with the devotees, and, and uh, who is always fulfilling their, their desires. The Bhagavad Gita says that the Lord is always there for the for devotees. The moment they pray, uh, the Lord responds. Okay. Good. Go ahead. Next group. Take seventeen. Please, Prabhuji, you go ahead, Prabhuji. Tatovi, Prabhuji. Thank you, Maharaj. We are not having any metaphor here, Maharaj, but uh, uh, we saw the uh, four aspects. That is, he's eternally uh, like a fifteen-year-old boy. And then he is uh, beautiful and he's worshipped by the all peoples of all the planets. And he's very eager, uh, the, you know, this point we all loved it. He's very eager to bless his servants. Uh, and uh, this is our favorite match. He's very eager to bless all the devotees. Okay. They're eager to get the Lord's blessings. The Lord is eager to give his blessings. Yes. Devotees, of course, we don't like to, to, to take the blessings from the Lord. We like to give service. We're not, we're not just come to get blessings, but we want to give service. We've already, we, all, we should feel the Lord has already given us so much. We want to give service. Anyway, okay. Text 18. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, in the Shloka 18, it is mentioned, Kirtanya Tirtha Yashasam, the worth singing uh, Lord of glories. So when I see the Lord is called as Uttama Shloka, when I see the best poetry used to glorify the Lord, like uh, uh, Brahma Samhita or uh, so many prayers in the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, uh, I feel so much. Uh, uh, enchanted and I feel so amazing that one. Even I like that uh, poetry. I inspire so much Maharaj. And uh, our uh, South Indian Venkateshwar Suprabhatam also, that is also one of the uh, example of best poetry, Uttama Shloka. And here it is mentioned, Punya Shloka Yashaskaram. His glories enhance the glory of the devotees. And the Prabhupada is mentioning, um, uh, one can become purified uh, simply by chanting the name of his holy devotee also. So when we uh, read the, the Chaitanya Charitamrita or when we read the different characteristics of uh, Jagannath, the stories and all, I inspire so much like uh, Dasya Bauri, who is very pure devotee of the Lord. And uh, 
Srila Krishnadasa Kaviraja Goswami inspires, he inspires her. Even in his old age, how much he dedicated for writing Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, that inspires me a lot. Like devotees, we have to always remember them. Uh, here, the mentioning uh, by simply chanting the holy name of the devotee also, we will get uh, purified. That is the, uh, the special aspect in this shloka. And uh, uh, the second, uh, uh, which is my favorite aspect of the Lord form, is uh, uh, Subhim Lord Jagannath is my uh, favorite aspect, Maharaj, who is uh, always looking, uh, Aishwaryam Bhava, but who is always looking for Moda for uh, understand the Radharani. So uh, this form uh, is my favorite, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we'll go ahead. Srila Prabhupada's purport accomplish three purposes. First of all, they denigrate impersonalism. Secondly, direct the devotees to the deity form. And thirdly, describe the Lord's beauty. Okay, we want to appreciate how the beauty of the Lord. That's so important. So dressing the deities from the deity, it's very important, you know, the dresses should be very nice. Prabhupada was very concerned to see the deities nicely dressed. And we do have a very high standard in ISKCON. So there are eight different kinds of materials recommended for the devotees to see the form of the Lord. So these forms are, these different materials are mentioned. Sand, clay, wood, you know, Jagannath is there, Daru, Daru, Daru Murti, wood, stone. And we get, of course, many stone deities. Uh, they may be complete, contemplated within the mind. Jewels, metal, painted colors. And all the forms are of the same value. So we should understand that. The, the, it doesn't matter if it's sand or clay or jewels or whatever, they all have the same value because they're all the Supreme Lord. Okay, going ahead, meditation on the individual limbs of the Lord. We, we spoke about the overall form of the Lord. Now we're going to look at the different limbs of the Lord, beginning from His lotus feet. So, we have a, you have your groups, right? So, uh, let me see. One group will take, first group will take the lotus feet, and then the second group will take the, the thigh. I think it's the thighs. And then the third group will take the hips. And then there's the chest for the fourth group. And then there's the, uh, the arms of the Lord for the fifth group. And then the face of the Lord for the sixth group. And the lotus eyes for the seventh group. You want to make seven groups, Maharaj? Yeah, how many groups have we got? Well, we can have one more, I think. There's something, I have to look at the text again to remember. What goes after the head, after the lotus eyes, then the, uh, have to check on that. Uh, there's the smile. Oh, the smile. Yeah. The and laughter. Smile and laughter, okay, thank you. How many groups, Maharaj? Yeah, uh, how many people have we got? We have got uh, 18. Okay, so we could have nine groups, yeah? Okay, Maharaj. Recording stopped.
So we want to hear the metaphors, des description of the limbs, the metaphors, any metaphors used in the glories or the benefit they grant upon the devotees. How many minutes, Maharaj? Just five, five, five minutes, yes. Okay, please join the rooms. Is the question clear to all of you? is doing what is not clear, Mother. Yes, group, group one, the lotus feet. Group two, the, the, the legs of the... Group four, the chest. Group five, the arms, the lotus face of the Lord. Group seven, the smile. Group eight, the eyes. And there is group nine also, Maharaj. Oh, yeah, group nine, the the top of the head. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. I guess I'm the one here. Eyes. Oh, yes? Nobody else is with you? Not yet. No one joined. <laughs> okay, you're doing the eyes, is it? Yes, Maharaj. Did you find the verse? Not yet. <laughs> Must be further up. Basically, here, or thirtieth shloka, thirty thirty one also. Thirty one, thirty. Curly hair and decorated by lotus like eyes. Hare Krishna Girirani Mataji. Lotus like eyes. Oh, yes, a beautiful analogy. Yes, his two eyes are compared to two fish swimming about. Yes. A lotus surrounded by swarming bees. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's a, the analogy. And P1 also is having about the eyes. Yogi should contemplate. Uh, compassionate glances frequently cast by the Lord's eyes, for they soothe the most fearful threefold agonies of his devotees. Oh, okay, so the benefit also. Yes. Soothe the most fearful threefold agonies, his glances, accompanied by I loving mean, smiles, are full, full of, of abundant grace. Wonderful. Okay, I think you've got a good thing there then, Maharaj, Mataji. Yes, 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 Maharaj.
Paris, can I close the rooms? Yeah, I think so. Hare Krishna, everyone back? No, Maharaj, 20 seconds left. Oh, sorry. Recording in progress. Okay, so welcome back. So we're beginning like text 19. When text 19, we, who have we got? Well, we wanted to hear about the lotus feet of the Lord. From room 1, Radha Harini Mataji. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, so from uh, text 19, uh, the, it is said that the yogi should visualize the Lord standing, moving, and sitting or lying down. And uh, actually the Lord's lotus feet are described in text 21 and 22. Uh, in uh, text 21, it is said that uh, the Lord's lotus feet are adorned with the marks of thunderbolt, a gourd, a banner, and a a lotus and here the metaphors which are used is the lord's uh, ruby uh, nails they are as beautiful as ruby nails and they're shining and they resemble the orb of the moon and by uh, meditating on the lord's lotus feet uh, it dispels the thick gloom or it dispels the ignorance in the, the devotee's heart mm -hmm. and in text uh, 22 uh, the Lord's lotus feet is so glorified because the Ganga, which is what washed the Lord's lotus feet, and the Lord Shiva carries it on his head, and uh, therefore he is also become uh, important and great. The words used is Shiva Shivo Abhut. Mm, uh, he has become auspicious because of carrying the um, uh, Ganga on his uh, lotus head. And by uh, also meditating on the Lord's lotus feet, they act like thunderbolts by removing the mountain of sin in the mind of the meditating to you. Hare Krishna. Mm. Thank you very much. Very nice. Okay, go ahead, next group. Bhakti Priya Mataji and Radhesh Prabhu. Maharaj Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Mataji. So Maharaj, we found here that uh, uh, Goddess Lakshmi Ji is, uh, uh, she is always uh, found massaging the legs and thighs of the transcendental Lord, very carefully serving the Lord. So, and so here we generally says that, I mean normally, so uh, Lakshmi, I mean the Goddess of Fortune, Lakshmi Ji is a Goddess of Fortune, but Lakshmi Ji is always engaged in massaging the legs and thighs of the Supreme Personality of Lord, Godhead Narayana, who is lying on the ocean of the Garbo Akshay within universe. Yeah. And yes. Did you find anything else about the legs and thighs? It's much Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, yeah, one, one point I wanted to add in this. Here, uh, Abhayasya is very significant, for it indicates that uh, he could produce Brahma without the assistance of the goddesses fortune. Because the Lord is eternal, without any of this thing, he can produce Brahma. Uh, that is the thing. 
Yes, Maharaj. With, with, that, uh, with that a concert, he could produce Brahma. Yes. Uh huh. What about the thighs? Is my uh, internet is unstable. So. Mm -hmm. Did you also look at the thighs? Thighs point, Maharaj. You didn't get around to that, huh? No, Maharaj. This, this, this look only we read. Okay. So, if you look at text 20, who was text, who was the next group? What were you doing? Group 3? They're doing the marriage. Do, the marriage. They're doing what? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. We were doing gifts. But this... Yamanaji Prabhu, your voice is breaking. Let Shri Prada Mataji speak because we cannot hear you. Ramanaja Prabhu, hope you are able to hear us. Your voice is breaking. Your eyes. Maharaj, the next group is doing hips, Maharaj. Okay, if you look at text 24, then we'll just look at it together. It describes there the Lord's thighs. We'll describe yes, yes, this being the storehouse. Yes, Maharaj, thighs and both the hips are given. Okay, here, the, uh, here the metaphor is the Lord's thighs are like whitish blue, like the luster of the lime seed flower and appear most graceful and the Lord is carried on the shoulders of Garuda. It is mentioned here, Maharaj. And hips, uh, that is the rounded hips, which are encircled by girdle that rests on exquisite yellow silk, yellow silk lap that, that extends down to his ankles here mentioned, Maharaj. And the yogi who is concentrating on the each uh, uh, limb, especially thighs, the Lord thighs is mentioned reservoir of all strength, and his strength rests on his thighs of his transcendental body. His whole body is full of opulences, riches, all strength, all fame, all beauty, all knowledge and renunciation is mentioned here. And yogi is advised to meditate on transcendental uh, uh, form. There is no reason for meditating on something imaginary as this is, uh, uh, is the practice of so-called yogis whose objective is impersonal. Okay, thank you. Good. Next group is the topic is chest and Chittahari Prabhu and Gopi Jana Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj here uh, it said that uh, Mahami Bhute, Mahami, uh, Lakshmi Devi, uh, she is reciting in the Baksha, uh, Adhivasam in Baksha, and then she has been read, uh, addressed as. Mahavibhute, that means she is having all powers. Uh, and then it is also said that uh, the powers, which actually depended later, where it is said that the yogis uh, will concentrate their mind. Dhyana Mano Rayana Anivritte. So they focus on the Lord's chest. Uh, with an, uh, and then they will, be, uh, they will be very pleased by by that focus. And then uh, Prabhupada says over here, by so doing, the the yogis get all the powers, I mean, mystic powers, because they desire mystic powers, so they get all the mystic powers because of the mercy of the Lakshmi Devi. She who resides in the heart of the Lord. Okay. Next group is Nitya Nashina Prabhu and Tatpavit Prabhu. Topic is arms. Yes, Thank you. I wish you So, uh, a couple of points from, uh, from this uh, topic, arms of the Lord. So, the demigods, are the, they, they control the various functions of the material nature, but they get the powers from the arms of the Lord. This is point number one, Maharaj. Point number two, now, um, he has these uh, weapons, starting from Sudarshan Chakra, then he has uh, Komodaki, uh, the mace, then he has a sword called Nandaka, and then he has a conch shell. Now the Sudarshan Chakra contains thousand spokes and it is dazzling 
brilliantly and then uh, his uh, he rolls his conch which is like a swan in his lotus palm and uh, this komodaki that is um, uh, what to say smeared with blood of the enemies and of course it, it removes uh, fear from the devotee's heart and then he also has uh, a sword called nandakan okay everything this is there this is relishri mataji and prabhu lotus face hey krishna this is my observation this is says in the text 29 um, it's described here the yogi should meditate upon the lotus like countenance of the lord and uh, the main purpose uh, is that actually why the lord uh, appears because of his compassion for the devotees he appears and then there is a description about his nose which is prominent and uh, it and his cheeks are very crystal clear and he is having a um, a alligator shaped earrings on his uh, ears and it is very illuminating and oscillating <laughs> and then it is described here that uh, uh, he 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 main the main pop in the proper shri prabhupad mentioned that the lord mainly descends for uh, on a deep compassion for his devotees there is no need for him to come personally to destroy the demons which can be done by his agents but he specifically comes to give pleasure to his devotees and during that time he just as a matter of course he kill the demons and in the brahma samhita it's mentioned that advaita machita manadi rupam that all the different forms of the lord are one but each devotee may like to see the different forms of the lord one may like to see radha krishna one may like to worship sita ramachandra lakshmi narayana so according to the desire of the devotees the lord appears in different forms and it's mentioned that actually the yogis cannot imagine any form they have to uh, meditate upon the forms which are approved by the uh, by the devotees and in text 30 also there is a description about the beautiful face of the lord and there is mentioned about the curly hair uh, decorated uh, by a lotus and he is having a lotus like eyes and dancing eyebrows and it's like a lot uh, it's like lotus surrounded by swarming bees and a pair of swimming fish would be put to shame by its beauty of the lord <laughs> so here uh, prabhupad mentioned the purport the word jayam uh, manomayam the manomayam is again it's not an imagination as the impersonalist may think that uh, they can imagine any form and meditate upon the lord which is not approved what is they do not imagine a form they only worship a lot forms which are approved and uh, authorized by the scriptures and given by the uh, authorities okay very good thank you very much thank you mai udarshan prabhu hari krishna mata ji uh, next is a uh, is a 31 shloka it shows a yogi should con- contemplate with the full devotion and compassionate glance frequently cast by the lord i for the soothe of the most fearful three agonies of the his devotees the glances are accompanied by loving smiles and full of abundant grace it says that uh, when our uh, basically that uh, in the conditional life we are always have a suffering and anxieties and agonies which cannot be avoided <laughs> but in the transcendental uh, uh, even uh, sometimes uh, we can even in transcendental plane we can have anxieties and some disturbances this can be only mitigated by supreme pulse uh, uh, person is super uh, godded is his smile his beautiful smile when we look on the smile his form of smile it can mitigate all of our anxieties and his influences and the lord bestows innumerable favor upon his devotees by uh, uh, showing his smile with the grace of the his smile that is the fullness of compassion his smile is in the fullness of compassion for his pure devotees hari krishna this has been described in that 31 Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Irani Matajan, Rajab Krishna ki Mataji. Hi Krishna Mataji, our uh, text 30 is describing the Lord's beautiful lotus-like eyes and the eyebrows. 
they are saying that the eyebrows are dancing and Prabhupada is comparing these to uh, analogy that uh, his two eyes are compared to two fish which are swimming about it. and the lotus flower on the water is very beautiful when surrounded with humming bees and fish so lots uh, this is that beautiful and in the next shloka 31 uh, it is mentioned that the yogis should be fully contemplate on these glances which the lord gives cast by the lord's eyes for they soothe the most fearful threefold agonies all the anxieties and agonies uh, which are natural uh, for a human being in this material conditioned life they are all gone with the uh, beautiful glance of the lord all right fine thank you Tanay Janaki Mataji and Rashish Prabhu about the top of the head I think I think there's there was nothing on the top of, I think it's just a smile the only thing we didn't do was the the laughter in text 33 and with Pranams Maharaj uh, there is the arched eyebrows oh the arched in, eyebrows okay in in text 32 so you know the, the Lord's eyebrows are compared to an arc and uh, this these eyebrows are so charming that you know one can forget uh, the charms of the uh, sensual attraction of this uh, material world and all the living entities are shackled here in the material existence because of uh, the, the attraction to sense gratification and the eyebrows of the lord they protect the devotees and the sages uh, from this lust of the material world so that's that's the significance, Maharaj Hare Krishna. That's okay, thank you very much, Prabhu. Yeah, okay, fine. There's one hand raised, Maharaj. Yes. Hand is raised. Okay. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Uh, Maharaj, can you uh, elaborately explain the marks of the lotus feet of the Lord? Because we know only a little bit. Uh, can you explain, Maharaj, please? <laughs> well, the, there's a whole book on it, you know. <laughs> uh, there's a book, it's a, there's a book by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, which was published some years ago by Mahanidhi Swami. It's a little booklet. I happen to have a copy okay. of it. Uh, the, the different, okay. there's a lot of markings there, like 18 markings, you know. <laughs> I, if you want to go through each of them, take some time, you know. But uh, I'll try to send you a copy out. Maybe we'll photocopy it and send you some send it to the devotees it would be useful what's the name of the book Maharaj? Uh, yeah i can't remember right now but i have it in my bag I'll, i have to get it out for you i'll tell you on to next class thank you Maharaj. we'll send you our okay, Maharaj. thank you i'll give Hare. i'll give padma sundari the details Hare. and you can get it it should be online it should be available online I'll, I'll get the name and give it to Padma Sundari and she'll give it to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Let's see. Okay, here's the lotus feet of the Lord. Very nice. Do you recognize his lotus feet? Have you seen them before? Madam, Madam. Maya Purta, Madam. Jai. List reasons why the process of hearing and chanting and fixing the mind on the pastimes of the Lord is superior to meditation on the Lord. The only difference is that hearing and fixing the mind on the pastimes of the Lord is easier than visualizing the form of the Lord within one's heart because as soon as one begins to think of the Lord, especially in this age, the mind becomes disturbed and due to so much agitation the process of seeing the Lord within the mind is interrupted. For example, even a child can hear and derive the benefit of meditating on the pastimes of the Lord simply by listening to a reading from the Bhagavatam. 
that describe the Lord as he is going to the pasturing grounds with his cows and friends. In this age of Kali Yuga, Lord Chaitanya has recommended that one should always engage in chanting and hearing Bhagavad Gita. The Lord also says that the Mahatmas or great souls always engage in the process of chanting the glories of the Lord, just by hearing others derive the same benefit. The importance of meditation on the Lord's lotus feet. Another significant point of this verse is that the mind of the conditioned soul, on account of its association with the material energy from time immemorial, contains heaps of dirt in the form of desires to lord it over material nature. This dirt is like a mountain. But a mountain can be shattered when hit by a thunderbolt. Meditation on the lotus feet of the Lord acts like a thunderbolt on the mountain of dirt in the mind of the yogi. Alright, that's one item. Uh, then meditation and temple worship. The Lord's transcendental form can either be meditated upon in the mind or placed in a temple in the form of a statue and decorated in such a way that everyone can contemplate it. Temple worship, therefore, is meant for persons who are not so advanced that they can meditate upon the form of the Lord. There is no difference between constantly visiting the temple and directly seeing the transcendental form of the Lord, they are of equal value. So, seeing the Lord in the temple is equal to meditating on the Lord in the mind. Yogis take advantage of the process of smaranam, whereas bhakti yogis take special advantage of the process of hearing and chanting. Agonies and anxieties mitigating. As long as one is in conditional life in the material body, it is natural that he will suffer from anxieties and agonies. One cannot avoid the influence of material energy, even when one is on the transcendental plane. Sometimes disturbances come, but the agonies and anxieties of the devotees are at once mitigated when they think of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in His beautiful form or the smiling face of the Lord. The Lord bestows innumerable favours upon his devotee, and the greatest manifestation of his grace is his smiling face, which is full of compassion for his pure devotees. So is Krishna smiling at you? Yes, Maharaj. When we go to see the deities, does Krishna smile? He's, look, he's always smiling, Maharaj. He's looking very happy. Yeah? Good. That's his greatest mercy. The entire universe is full of miseries, and therefore the inhabitants of this material universe are always shedding tears out of intense grief. There is a great ocean of water made from such tears. But for one who surrenders unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the ocean of tears is at once dried up. One need only see the charming smile of the Supreme Lord. In other words, 
the bereavement of material existence immediately subsides when one sees the charming smile of the Lord. We can understand how important it is for us to go and see the deities. And actually not just to go for us to see, but we should go to the deity to be seen. Hmm? There's a story about the blind man who wanted to go to the temple. So his friend said, why do you want to go to the temple? You're blind, you can't see anything. He said, I want Krishna to see me. So we should also think like that. We should go to the temple to be seen, not just to see. We don't go to the temple just to see Krishna, but we want to be seen by Krishna. So that's the proper consciousness in going in front of the deity. Okay, so here's a summary of the, the, these final verses of the chapter. Lord Kapila continues to respond to Devahuti in chapter 27, text 20, about how the soul is bound and freed. So Devahuti had asked about that in the previous chapter, about how the soul is bound and freed. So we put the summary of the main point from each of the verses. So 34, the yogi's experience. One develops love of God. The yogi's experience, right? The, the, the yogis, they, they don't really develop, well, unless they're bhakti yogis. But the yogi experiences detachment from the body. And the devotee goes on to develop love of God. Maharaj, in uh, text 34, can I ask a question? Yes. Text 34, the, in the sloka it is said that uh, yogi uh, is bathed in a stream of tears occasioned by intense love. So this, uh, why is... Uh, a devotee or I mean a yogi who is in intense love, why there is tears? Because in the previous sloka we have seen that tears comes because of the agony, agonies and the due to the material existence he is sick of that. So so what is this tears? How is this formed? What is the mood behind this tears? Well, if it's speaking, when we're speaking about love of God, if they develop love of God, there would be tears of love. Right? There's different kinds of tears. <laughs> tears are the, the misery of the material world, but there's also tears of love of God. The ecstasy, just the joy of having the loving relationship with Krishna. The bhava which the devotee experiences because, because of shedding of tears, right? We know in Shikshastikam, when we'll, Naya, when, Naya yeah, right, the eyes decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when we chant the holy name. So, it, of course, it's a very advanced stage. Only when we experience, I think, I will know what it is like. Tears coming when next. Yeah, we, we hear about it, we read about it. It's a it's, it's, you know, it's not so easy for us to experience it. These are, these are high levels of ecstatic love for Krishna. No, but sometimes even you get a, we get a, you know, even without being very qualified, sometimes we may be blessed with that kind of a, uh, experience that you shed some tears. Sometimes even a neophyte devotee will come to the temple, will see the deities and they may shed tears. Or in the, in the kirtan, even a neophyte devotee, very new devotee, may shed tears of joy due to the kirtan. Mostly the tears are due to the absence of the suffering. The absence, uh, you know, experiencing the 
happiness rather than that absence of suffering is so much relief yes <laughs> yes relief from it could be and certainly something transcendent it may be shadow attachment but that's all right we're in, they're encouraged to go on and follow all right text 35 material mind is destroyed text 36 the soul devoid of material coverings with the purification get rid of all the coverings of the soul the material mind removed also so this is pure this is a purification freeing the soul text 37 because he had achieved his real identity he acts totally unaware of his body so his real identity it means self-realization He's understood something of his spiritual position. And so in that kind of consciousness, one no, no longer thinks about the body. And so we read about people like Rishabdev and Sukadeva Goswami, how they were behaving. Now you have Lord Nityananda, Avaduta. So they're totally detached from the body. 38. The body of such a liberated yogi is taken charge by the Lord. Because they've surrendered completely to the Lord, so the Lord takes care of them. 39. He understands he's different from his body. Okay. 40, 41. Bhagavan is different from the jiva, definitely, that's understood. 42, sees the super soul in all beings and all beings in the super soul. This is similar to the statement in the Bhagavad Gita, 6th chapter. For one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me, I am never lost to him, nor is he ever lost to me. So see the super soul in all beings. Yes, he's the Lord's in the heart of all beings, and all beings in the super soul. That's a bigger, <laughs> a big step up to see all beings in the super soul. 43 the pure soul manifests in different bodies. And 44, after conquering insurmountable maya, he is self-realized. Maharaj, I have a doubt in 34. Yes. Purport. 34 purport, nirbija yoga and sabija yoga. Oh, nirbija, yoga. nirbija and sabija yoga, yes. What's your doubt? I don't understand what is that lifeless yoga and living yoga. Well, it's explained in the purport. You read the purport? You, you didn't read it? Yes, but I'm, I'm unable to comprehend or understand what it is. It's important. We should know that. Sabija and Nirbija yoga. Yeah. Um, forcibly engaged is nirbija. Right. When the mind forcibly is engaged, then it's nirbija or lifeless yoga. For the yogi does not automatically engage in the personal service of the Lord. But when he is com constantly thinking of the Lord, that is sabbija yoga or living yoga. So, if we have to force the mind to think, <laughs> we're forcing the mind to think upon the form of the Lord. That is Nirbija Yoga. But it should be spontaneous, right? We should come to the Raga Nuga platform, spontaneous devotion, automatically engage 
in the personal service of the Lord. Because ours is also, I mean, uh, mine is not automatically, I am not able to do. So it is nirvija means we are, um, there is no fruit, be no uh, life or the pra this practice, what it means? Well, lifeless yoga, it, that's, what the, that's what it means, right? That, but, but they're talking about engaging in the in engaging upon the form of the Lord, the personal service of the Lord, very personal service. So we have, you know, because we're we're doing sadhana bhakti, we're following the rules and regulations. So you know, we we have to constantly force our mind to to think of like that, to do this, I have to do that, I have to do, uh, you know, we, we're not very, spun, we're, we haven't come to that level of sabija, where we do it naturally, constantly thinking about the Lord. But, you know, we're on the path, it takes time, it takes time to come to that level. I was thinking bija is a seed, bija. Seed. I was thinking, I was trying to understand nirbija, no uh, life, no seed. That means, well, then what is the benefit of that practice? Yes, but I, I, it doesn't, they don't explain it like that, you know. I, I, I don't know about if this bija is the same seed, as if it means actually seed. It may be a different, you know, because it's written in, English, you don't know, it may, you don't know exactly what the word is, with seed or without seed. But the way they explain it, they talk about life. They don't talk about seeds, they're talking about life. So living yoga and lifeless yoga. Lifeless yoga, it's like you're doing it mechanically, you know. You do, you're doing it ritualistically, so it doesn't have real consciousness or fear. There's no real, not so much love there. We haven't developed that real love yet. That's the idea. But Sabija Yogi, constantly thinking of the Lord. So it's with life that you're doing it naturally, spontaneously. It's the the Raganuga platform. Right? Okay, Madam. So we want to come to that level. We want to have life. <laughs> so sabij. The seed is the life. You could think of it as life, you know, the potential life. Some seeds, they don't sprout, you know. So we want to we want to germinate the seed, to bring life. There should be life. We want to see life. And we thank you for bringing that up, because that's an, that's an important point, those two terms, sabija, nirbija. We do want to have life. We want to come to this platform of sabija, living yoga. It's constantly thinking of the Lord. Not that we're just, you know, oh, do this, do that, and we do it mechanically without much consciousness. So one time Prabhupada said to the temple, he said to the devotees, because you have no bhava, you have no bhava, because you offered flower, they offered dead flowers to the deities. So Prabhupada was upset. So life, yeah, we have living yoga, that's what we want. We'll go ahead here. Arjuna dovetailed his mind with Krishna's desire. This is called oneness. This oneness, however, did not cause Arjuna and Krishna to lose their individualities. The Mayavadi philosophers 
cannot understand this. They think that oneness necessitates loss of individuality. Actually, however, we find in Bhagavad Gita that individuality is not lost. When the mind is completely purified in love of God, the mind becomes the mind of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <laughs> so this is, this is the stage of love of God. So this is the highest stage. The mind becomes the mind of the Supreme Lord. The yogi views his body. Would someone like to read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Because he has achieved his real identity, the perfectly realized soul has no conception of how the material body is moving or acting. Just as an intoxicated person cannot understand whether or not he has clothing on his body. The body of such a liberated yogi along with his senses is taken charge of by the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he functions and it functions until its destined activities are finished. The liberated devotee being awake to his constitutional position and thus situated in Samadhi, the highest perfectional stage of yoga, does not accept the byproducts of the material body as his own. Thus he considers his bodily activities to be like the activities of a body in a dream. So this is the stage of the liberated soul, the yogi, is completely detached from the body. He doesn't know what's happening with the body, he doesn't even think about the body. Okay. Yes, someone else, Sri? Sushmita Mataji, please read Mataji. Haribur. Uh, Achintya Bheda Abheda Tattva. The blazing fire is different from the flames, from the sparks, and from the smoke. Although all are intimately connected because they are born from the same blazing wood. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is known as Param Brahma is the seer. He is different from the Jiva soul or individual living entity who is combined with the senses, the five elements and consciousness. Srimad Bhagavatam 3.28.40 and 41. Hari. Thank you. So the living entity like sparks from the fire and the big blazing fire that is the Supreme Lord. So we're born from the fire. We're connected. So the Lord is the seer. And we are to be seen. Understanding the relationship. A yogi should see the same soul in all manifestations, for all that exists is a manifestation of different energies of the Supreme. In this way the devotee should see all living entities without distinction. That is realization of the Supreme Soul. As fire is exhibited in different forms of wood, so, under different conditions of the modes of material nature, the pure spirit soul manifests itself in different bodies. Texts 42 and 43. So that's described, of course, in Bhagavad Gita, Vijavanaya Sampani, Brahmani Gavihastini, Suni Chaiva Swapaki Cha. Pandita Samadarshana, seeing everyone equally, 
the elephant, the cow, the dog, the dog eater. So one who is actually in knowledge will see everything. Oh, overcoming the eternal energy. Uh, what does it say? Overcoming the eternal enemy. External energy. Oh, the external energy. Thank you, because I've got oh, so many things covering my screen. Okay, this is a text 44. Thus a yogi can be in the self-realized position after conquering the insurmountable spell of Maya, who presents herself as both the cause and effect of this material manifestation, and is therefore very difficult to understand. So the yogi becomes self-realized after conquering Maya. So how did he conquer Maya? By Astanga Yoga, by taking shelter of the Supreme Lord. Overcoming the eternal energy from Prabhupada's purport. The external energy of the Supreme Lord is Durvibhavya, very difficult to understand and very difficult to conquer. One must, however, conquer this insurmountable spell of Maya, and this is possible by the grace of the Lord. For those who engage in devotional service, there is no spell of Maya, and their situation is all perfect. The duty of the living entity as a part and parcel of the whole is to render devotional service to the whole. That is the ultimate perfection of life. Okay, are there any questions here today? Maharaj, I have a comment. Yes. About the question which was raised by Ramanuja Prabhu regarding the Ashtanga Yoga, why Dharana, uh, Dhyana and Samadhi is uh, mentioned there in the Yoga Rudra stage. In 6.3, uh, the commentary by Sri Baldev Vidya Bhushan, he states that the Yoga Rudra stage starts with Dhyana. Oh. That's why it is there in the picture like that. Okay. Thank you, Maharaji. Thank you, Maharaj. There are no questions, Maharaj. There are no hands raised. All right, no hand raised. Okay, not, not very challenging, the, not very philosophical, more technical. Astanga Yoga is more technical process, mechanical process. Do this, do that. The meditation of the Lord's form was wonderful, Maharaj. It's the first time we are reading and hearing it. It was, it's really very, uh, uh, it will, we'll be able to focus on the form, meditate. Along with chanting, we can do that, no, Maharaj? Yes, definitely. Yes, we should chant. We have to chant and we have to also think of the Lord also. It's very good. Take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. Our meditation should begin from his lotus feet. So from that section, we, we have, it's very nice, very clear how to think of the, the Lord's lotus feet and the different pastimes and the significance of the Lord's feet and how the water which washes his feet is taken on the head of Lord Shiva and the different markings on the Lord's lotus feet. So we'll send you that, I'll get that name of that book for you. Art of Chanting, Maharaj. Hmm? The book name is Art of Chanting by Mahanidhi Swami Maharaj. Art of There is a book for lotus feet marking also. Yeah, this yeah. Is Another book is... Yeah, but this, uh, this is there even in Facebook. If you see for every marking, uh, Mahanidhi Swamaraj's comment is there in Facebook also. 
You just Google it, you will get it. Oh, really? And, yes, Maharaj, I just tried it. Oh, I, I can have the link to them. It's got all the markings and everything? Yes, of uh, Srimati Radharani and Krishna's. Oh, okay. You want me to share that, Maharaj? No, no, I have the book. <laughs> so, what do you want me to do, Maharaj? Okay, want... give me that. Yeah. Yeah. It's easier if I have a soft copy, yeah, because I don't have soft copy. I just had the book. I had the hard copy for a long time. No, it is It is just talking about the markings, Maharaj. Oh, just talking about the markings, uh-huh. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, that's all it is. That's, I know, that's all it, That's what the book is. So if you want to share the photocopies, then I'll share it, Maharaj. Whatever you say. Yeah, if you want to share. So you, I don't have the book here, Maharaj. Oh. I have it. Oh, oh, I see. I just found it from the Facebook. It is there. Just the markings and the meaning of the markings are there. Well, that's what's in the book. Anyway, yeah. I, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll try to. I'll send you the name of the book, and maybe you can search it. No, no, I'll get it. Just now. let me see. Okay, so it's uh, the book is called Sri Sri Radha Govinda Meditations Divine Forms and Lotus Feet. So you got the book name, and I think Raman Prabhu has also shared it in WhatsApp. So the question is Yeah, he translated it from a book by Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. But this has got, it's got uh, Radharani's lotus feet, Shamsundar's lotus feet, meaning of the symbols of Radha Krishna's lotus feet, Sri Shamsundar's Dhyana, Srimati Radhika Dhyana, Srimati Radhika, Srimati Radhika's flower ornaments, Radha Govinda, A guided meditation, meditation on Radha Govinda, Radha Govinda, Yoga, Yoga Pith Dhyana. Is it there on Facebook? It has. A, it doesn't have everything, Maharaj. The Facebook has only the markings and the meanings. 
Okay. Anyway, that's the main thing, what you want. And one of the students has already shared it in WhatsApp. So I think you wanted to know the meaning and it's there already. Okay. So, so questions is answered, huh? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Okay, so then we'll finish here tonight. And we'll be, that Monday is the last class, right? Yes, Maharaj. And you'll have time till 31st is your um, test on CVA. You'll have time to prepare for that. And the next class of Unit 14 will start after the next class. The Unit 14 will start in April 4th. April 4th? Yes. The schedule is there, Maharaj. The schedule I've shared with the students and also with you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll see you on Monday. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Hari. Uh -huh.